Hey guys, welcome back to Switch's Kerbal Space Program. I am in the Space Center and absolutely brassic. Well, I say absolutely brassic. We're at 183k, which in, on an individual mission status is, sounds like quite a lot, but you may notice that we still got first tier buildings all over the place like a first tier VAB and a first tier space plane hangar these will not do me for any further missions than the moon so we need to get monies and you know single missions as I've just said will not really get us a lot of money but if we come over to the tracking station this is where we can visualize some of the things we're doing if we come over to the moon and zoom in a bit you'll notice that we've got all these missions that look like they want to get done which to me screams a lot of money here and not only do these give us lots of money these are these are the visual survey missions but on the way we can also plant a flag and we can get some scientific data and yeah there, there's all sorts of things we could do on the way there so i think it's time for twitchy's great big money making moon mission because that's that's just what we're gonna do um so it's time to get our testing hats on Enter Revert Space, the place where we can go and blow things up and come back to where we were. And um, yeah, try, try and get some designs on the go for, for ships that can fly around on the surface of the moon um, and, and capitalize on all the fuel and the missions up there that need to be done. As we all know, rover designs should be uh, flat and wide to give them a nice solid wheelbase on so that they don't roll around and um, like smash themselves up on the surface of the moon. Now this was quite a naive attempt to try and get around that particular problem. As you can see I've got um, landing gear radially all around my spaceship in the vain effort that like if we do flip around at all uh, we can land on our landing gear and be safe and it kind of looked all right up until this point where to be honest I'm not sure what the failure was here there just very was a, a, a very big fail in this design here as all of these explosions are testament to now I immediately thought the problem might be that the uh, central part portion between the landing gear were touching and for some time this actually did appear to be what my problem was. We can see here I'm getting up to a whopping 100 meters per second. I even managed to do a couple of turns but eventually everything catches up with me and explosions are, are all around so I'm like okay back to the drawing board let's just scrap this design and try and come up with something a bit more stable design processes being what they are i actually went a little bit backwards in the scale here you'll see we have three landing gear but more importantly we have a lot of fuel and we have all the scientific equipment here this is the first iteration of the alone ranger single person alone ranger Due to the different clusters on the moon, uh, a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere cluster of missions that we need to go for, I decided that we're probably going to work, be working towards two different rover designs. One that Richmall's going to be taken and one that hopefully Jebediah and Bob will be involved with. Now this one seems to be going alright and to be honest th this is actually quite a, quite a solid design for a three wheeled rover. I, I, I was more than a little bit impressed with how well it did but you will notice that we are travelling at the half the speed that the last one did and we're having troubles all over the place just troubles everywhere and widening that particular design out a little bit you'll notice we now have three fuel tanks uh, like a, a, a three wheel design on the go uh, this will change by the end of the the, the testing process um, but yeah, th this this is definitely a lot more stable. You'll see that we are already pushing through the speeds we were when we were having trouble uh, on the Hilliot Bridge. And the reason that I'm going down the, the this runway here is because it's very bumpy. Uh, it's going to kick my ship around all over the place, and that gives it real time to like just test out how well it reacts with the SAS. And for some reason, this happens at the end. Now I, I'm putting that down almost entirely to player error you'll notice that the way that i dealt with it was just wrong but enough of those single player design or single person design i now want to take this out this is a tonto to go with the alone ranger this has two cockpits one on the front one on the back and just loads of fuel it also has double science so it has like two two science bays two mysterious goos uh, obviously it's got the communicatron to send back all the uh, crew reports and EVAs that we're, we're bound to be picking up because these guys are going to be doing the southern hemisphere ones that's uh, six different targets to get for so if we can't transmit our science 
we are stranded with these cockpits being what they are. You'll notice that the stability of this design is definitely something to write home about. Even in IVA mode, this thing can definitely be uh, steered around and kept level. Uh, the main, well, the main advantage IVA view actually had is we were able to see where the actual like floor horizon is as opposed to the planet's horizon. So we can keep the level, the wheels nice and level. And very soon I decided that this, this is definitely the one to go with. Um, it, it's so stable that literally the only way I can break it is if I break it by turning around too hard. So it's time to take everything we had learned from all that testing there and everything that I would thought about during a good night's sleep to produce this, the final version of a Lone Ranger. Um, in fact, this isn't the final version because I even decide at the end that it's not worth taking these science instruments on the back because it's not coming back. There is no way to ferry the science from the moon to Kerbin. Uh, and literally all it's there for is to get some crew reports and some EVA. So even this is not the final version, but this is the final bit of testing footage that I have. And to be honest, this footage is a little bit boring because literally every test that I could throw at it, it did incredibly well at. So we're going to skip this and go to launch. So before the full mission report, I just have one thing little extra to show here. Uh, during a, a first flight, this happened a couple of problems it happens all the time um i just had to revert and get back to this point where we have rich mill kerman in the flight seat i was a little bit worried about this selection of pilot because uh you'll notice on his sas there he doesn't actually have um sort of the stability control or the point to retrograde and stuff like that which in my mind meant he had no sas control thankfully when i tried it all out it all went well just like that staging with and and rich males the put the person to go for here it turns out uh my lifter design wasn't overly um innovative i threw like three stacks of these double fuel tanks plus skipper engines on there which the en kerbal engineer told me was good enough to get us up to the moon which thankfully it was so i'm new using the same techniques that we did for the kerbal x to try and get my orbit um, relatively close to the top of the atmosphere here. We don't want to be wasting all our fuel in getting ourselves into a ridiculously eccentric orbit when we actually want to be going off in another direction or something. Which, thank you, we did really, really well, but we're just a little bit too far around the orbit to be, like, safely going to the moon. I mean, I could have hit my throttle full pelt right now, but I decided, no, no, no let, let's, let's wait until the next orbit. Like, we don't have patched conics. We have got to get this right. If we don't, we're just going to be flying around the Kerbal system with no idea of what's going on. And that's not what we're about. We're about precision flying. And indeed, we are so precise, there is nothing to report until POW! We cross the moon's sphere of influence and realise we are going to crash into the surface. I mean, that, to me, that's precision right there. I mean, if you can fly up and just touch the moon like that, you know you've got it right. Uh, okay, so the first thing I need to do is burn off radially to try and make sure that we don't smash into the surface because I think that would end our flight pretty quickly. So I first burn anti radially because for some reason I can't tell the difference between the two, uh, two markers on my nav ball until we bring our periaps 15 kilometers above the surface brilliant exactly what i wanted to do but what i want to do next is grab a contract to get some scientific data from around the moon nice one gene thanks and then complete that contract that is 20 grand in the back pocket there brilliant now the next thing we need to do is get all these visual survey missions done so we need to take on the contract so that we get these lovely markers for rich mill to make sure his um orbit goes over the top of now i really thought that for this i was going to be landing at this point i was just going to be making my nice normal circular burn uh we're, we're going to spin ourselves around to the retrograde make sure we're all lined up prettily well prettily well yeah prettily well to get this landing done in a very pretty manner as pretty seems to be the word we are looking for today when suddenly i notice oh we've entered the zone what happens if i do the thing oh i finished the contract. Well, that's great. Let's just carry on flying around, shall we? So my next plan at this point, as it stands at least, is to get down towards uh, Periaps, 
deorbit my burn, well not deorbit, but slow down my orbit enough to make it a nice circular one and try and get it going over the top of the one on the far right there. I'm kind of pointing at my screen and I'm hoping that you guys can see what I'm pointing at even though you can't see my finger pointing. That one that we see right there. Uh, and I think this is great because this, this does look really great right now. Um, and I'm like, right, okay, well we're going to go a bit north, time to turn around and like push ourselves down. Even though we've come into this view, it, it took me a little while to click that I'd run out of fuel. But there we go. We let it go as, you know, we need to let all things go eventually. And now we've got to start thinking about which way our trajectory is going just with this this tiny little vessel here. And I think I nailed it. I, I really do. Um, we, we turn around try, trying to aim roughly southwards. Uh, I, still, it's quite a, a distance away from, from me at that point. But I've, I've realized that, you know, I'm so far away that if I'm turning my orbit... Um, the point that's being most affected is actually between me and that point, not that point itself. Terrible, terrible wordings, lots of that's, but I hope you can understand what I'm going on about. Even if you didn't understand what I was just talking about, I really do hope that you understand that right now I have changed my vessel into its second mode of function. So, I turned off the rocket at the back and I turned on the two rockets underneath because it's time to turn into a vertical landing machine. Uh, well, mainly because it's got more, more oomph than, than the back burn. But... I was also coming in for a vertical landing, uh, as you can see, or as I thought, it would be a lot easier to come down vertically onto my wheels using these under engines as kind of a VTOL type landing for, for coming down, than it would be trying to use the one behind me, land in reverse, slow myself down, yeah, I, I just, I saw everything going wrong with that plan as it was, so... I, I, I managed to put these little engines underneath. Second crew report done. Uh, we are just like steaming through this mission and it's time to stop myself. We, we just need to stop where we are. Uh, and for some reason I decided that the best way to do this is with, with the one on the back. And I'm not sure what made me think about this or what, why I did it this way. Um, but th this is the way we've done it. You'll see, notice that I am nosing up quite a lot. This is mainly because I'm watching my vertical speed up at the top there. Um, I do not want to come crashing down to the surface. I want to literally stop and change my direction. Uh, if we ever get back to the map view, you will note that is because what we're trying to do is go southwest. Uh, and we're currently heading east, which is completely the wrong direction, as I say. And I don't want to land. That that That's my main point here. I didn't want to land because that's going to... Well, that comes with a risk of death, basically. And I don't like risks of death. I don't know about you. I like living my life risk of death free. Okay, so what we're going to do is jump forwards a little bit, just like uh, 200 meters of acceleration away, uh, until we get to this point where suddenly we're watching a sunset which I think is like incredibly beautiful and stuff, but it does lead us with a bit of an issue. You'll notice that we have a solar panel on top and that is very important. The reason it is very important is because have you ever tried to fly one of these things without SAS control? Uh, it, it, it is difficult. Um, really difficult, as I should say. Uh, you remember that I flew the, the the mission Bang Zoom. Oh, there was sunset. Sun sunset definitely happened, and we are in fact losing power on the uh, readout on the top right there. But yeah, you remember that I flew the mission Bang Zoom. Uh, that was without any SAS um, help, and it was difficult to say the least. Uh, I I could not do any sort of precision flying i just kind of had to point at the right area and hope that somewhere within the kilometer was a good enough landing zone for this mission that's not good enough and we are just watching a sunrise again so uh yay for that we had both a sunset and a sunrise within the same sort of minute minute and a half then that's brilliant uh so now that our uh, direction's changed i've suddenly gone oh wait it would be a lot easier if we used like the double engines underneath rather than trying to do everything on just this single tiny engine behind us uh and indeed i just nose down a little bit and, and kind of you know fly how i would naively expect a helicopter to fly you know i mean i know helicopters don't fly like this but you know you, you push down you lean forwards and you push backwards a little bit right that, that that's kind of the idea but dodgy helicopter analogies aside we're going to use this um technique to push ourselves uh, uh forwards well rather we're not pushing ourselves forward and this was kind of the main main point of this this little uh mission we're going to do here i didn't want to add 
too much vertical for uh, horizontal velocity sorry I, uh, I didn't mind adding vertical because the gravity of the mun is going to pull that back pull us back down and then we've got to deal with that but for every second of pushing forwards we do we're gonna have to at some point slow ourselves down at the end of the mission or at the end of this particular arc flight whatever you want to call it because there is no air resistance on the moon as i'm sure you are well aware and without air resistance we're, we're never going to slow down unless we use brakes and or rocket fuel and the brakes on these landing gear oh that's a beautiful shot the, <laughs> the brakes on these landing gear are horrendous i've tried to use them several times not on this mission but other missions where well I've tried to use them to stop and and it just doesn't work you you just end up like gliding along and you're like i'm supposed to be stopping why are there not even tire marks here and yeah it goes horrible but anyway small correctional maneuvers need to be made and indeed uh this is where we start like rocking ourselves around and, and pushing with for all we're worth trying our best to try and get the the end of these markers uh the end of my flight arc sorry and these markers to line up uh, and indeed i really need to push almost entirely sideways here as you can see i am giving myself a little bit of an upwards uh upwards velocity um because again fighting the moon's gravity and there we go i now think we are 100 percent trajectory assured everything's gonna go well and with that i'm gonna say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure i will see you next time when we're gonna see if we land this safely it's a big if guys i've not actually landed one of these yet i'll see you then bye